So my brothers and sisters, these are blessed days and these are blessed nights. And we have to make the most. We have to make the most of this month. And one of the ibadat, my brothers and sisters, one of the worships, acts of worships that we can all take part of. And it's something that seems to be overlooked nowadays. Because a lot of us, every one of us, we want the king hits. If you're a boxer or anyone who likes boxing, especially you know, for the young Arab, everyone wants the KO, everyone wants the, everyone wants the knockout punch. Everyone rocks up to the masjid, he hasn't been there all year round. Uh, rocks up on the first day of Ramadan, cast tell me what i got to do, bro, hurry up. What does that have to do? How do I reach levels with Allah? So everyone wants the KO hit. But my brother and sister, the reality is, to land a knockout hit, there's a lot of jabs that are in between, you know. And these little jabs that you're throwing in between, don't underestimate them. So one act, one particular ibadah that we tend to overlook, is the remembrance of Allah. To make dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal, my brothers. Something that is so easy, yet is so neglected. Musa, my brothers and sisters, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam had a very interesting relationship with Allah. Musa had a very, very interesting, unlike any other prophet before or after him, Musa spoke directly to Allah Azza wa Jal. So one day Musa is having a very interesting conversation with Allah and he asks, he says, Ya Allah, give me a dua, give me a supplication, give me something that I may remember you by and I want it to be unique, I want it to be customized for me, Musa. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he says to Musa, he says, Ya Musa, قُلْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ He says, Ya Musa, say لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ so Musa says, says, Oh Allah, I already say La ilaha illallah. And all the prophets that came before me, they also said La ilaha illallah. He's thinking, you know, I was hoping for something a little bit more special. He says to him, Ya Musa, don't you know that if the seven heavens and the earth and all that it contains was placed on one end of the scale and La ilaha illallah was placed on the other, that La ilaha illallah would be heavier? Something so simple, my brother and my sister, something that can flow off your tongue, so simple, yet it's massive in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's huge on the scales. Imagine Allah is saying that la ilaha illallah is heavier than the seven heavens and the earth. Don't underestimate, my brother and my sister, how much of your day has passed. How much time have we wasted? Brothers now tell me, cuz there's nothing to do. Brothers are sleeping now. After Asr, some of us from Dur. We're going to sleep from Dur and we usually set an alarm or tell the missus or tell the wife or your mom or your sister, wake me up five minutes before Maghrib. Is this how we're wasting our day, sleeping? Although for some, maybe sleeping is better. At least you're not falling in backbiting and sin and... But for those really who can make the most of their time, brothers are telling me, because there's nothing to do, I'm killing time. No, my brother, you're not killing time. Time is killing you. You wasted hours and hours where you could have said, La ilaha illallah, and filled up your scales. The Prophet of Allah says in the authentic hadith, an in amazing, incredible hadith. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Kalimatan. خفيفتان على اللسان فكيلتان في الميزان حبيبتان إلى الرحمن سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان الله العظيم الله أكبر والله the English language cannot do this hadith justice your habib your prophet your teacher is telling you my brother and my sister that there are two words, kalimatan, he says there are two words. Khafifatan al lisan. He says they're very light on the tongue. They're very easy to say. And then he says, but they're thakilatan fil mizan. He says, but they're heavy on the scales. One of the scholars, he comments about this and he says, how heavy are we talking, my brothers and my sisters? Are we talking kilos, Yani? Tons. What are we talking? 
So this scholar was of the opinion, he says, no matter how much you imagine these words to weigh, on the day of judgment, they're going to be heavier. And then the special part of the hadith for me personally, is the next line. He says, Habibatan illa Rahman. You know, my brothers, Malash, forgive me, I know the sisters here, and, and, but wallahi, for the sake of understanding. Brother, have you ever been in love? <laughs> the boys are smiling, yeah, because I've been in love. Have you ever been, yeah, yeah, forget in love. Have you ever watched a film Hindi, like a nice, hectic love story, love movie? You know, like one of those really fancy ones where Allahu Akbar, the love, and he loved her and she loved him, and the dad got involved and he didn't let them get married. Layla wa Majloon, what is it? Layla wa Majloon, wa Ba'arif Shu, Allah, like Shu. Bro, there are some movies, they're so over dramatized with love. By the end of it, you're a grown man with a big beard, you start doing these ones. Because what's wrong now? Well, I think something went in my eye, something went in my eye. Allahu Akbar, love and emotion and. and, and and if you ever watch two people in love, there's always one party is longing, he's dying to know the right words to say to his loved one. Have you ever seen someone go to ask for a girl's hand? I've had young Shabib, <coughs> hopeless bro, we're going to ask for her hand, because what do I say to him? And I don't know. I don't know what to say. Give me words to impress. Those that are in love, they're longing all the time. How do I find the right words to impress the one I love? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, my brother and sister, he's telling you the words that Allah loves to hear. He's telling you Allah loves to hear these words, He loves it. What are these words? He says, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al -Azim. So much effort we make to impress my to impress my friend, to impress my fiancé, to impress my wife, or to impress your husband. Yet Allah, with these two words, the promise of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that he loves these words. Allahu Akbar, how much of my day has passed? And they're heavy. They're heavy on the scales. He says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, whoever prays his fara'id, and Alhamdulillah, all of us are praying. There are five prayers. He says, whoever prays their fara'id, and after the salah, he reads Ayat al-Kursi, the most powerful verse in the Qur'an. In chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 255. He says, whoever reads this verse after every salah, he says, the only thing that will stand between him and Jannah is death. This isn't Wallah Sheikh Butanki speaking. Your Prophet Muhammad, my brothers and sisters, your Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's telling you the words, la yantiku alil hawa. He doesn't speak of his own vain desires. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he doesn't put salt and pepper to make things look appealing. What he speaks is truth. He's telling you, my brother and my sister, whoever reads this verse after every salah and is consistent on this, the only thing that will stand between you and Jannah is death. Allahu Akbar. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever prays his prayers, again, whoever prays his prayers, then after the prayer, he says, Subhanallah 33 times. Alhamdulillah 33 times. Allahu Akbar 33 times. And wraps it up and makes it a hundred by saying, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahul mulk, wa lahul hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. He says, whoever does this after every salah, Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive his sins, even if they're equivalent to the froth of the ocean. Allahu Akbar. Look how much is there in the remembrance of Allah. Look how much is there, my brothers and sisters, when you remember Allah. You want to make the most of Ramadan? Take advantage of every minute. And you know what's beautiful about the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal? Is you don't need to be in a special room. You don't need to be in a masjid somewhere. You don't, need, you don't even need to be in wudu. Wherever you are, whatever condition, you can keep your tongue busy in the remembrance of Allah and count your rewards. 
It's so easy to do. But how many of us remember to do it? 